Oh, there are people in chat who don't want me to cover Bo Burr? Oh, that's unfortunate because that's what we are covering in any case. Apparently, she said humanity is in its last days and Christians should rise up. This one is from Newt Milk, the first fan art I've ever shared, kind of trying to get back into a bit more serious, or into art a bit more seriously. Well, Newt Milk, it looks lovely, and I actually really like uh, the sash you have for my character here as well. It actually kind of invokes the one that's on Raz's character, I'm not going to lie. Hmm? It's, a, it's a fan art. I'm going to get to the next one in just a second, but see? Yay. The next one we have here is from Bon Bon Berry, and I am incredibly disappointed. Uh, I've worked really hard on this. It's just, it's just dumpy. It's just dumpy. It's just, it's just dumpy. Speaking of uh, dumpy, we're not going to dumpy. We're going to Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is better than dumpy. Fuck all of you. Anyways, the last one we have here is from Beth Joan. My daughter finished this one last night. Zoom in to read the facts on the Catboy milk. Oh, no. What? There are facts here? Warning. Contains... Oh, I can't read that. Contains something, so don't drink too much. Can have... Hold on. Don't drink too much. Will taste strange? Like Donald Trump? Oh, will turn orange like Donald Trump. Oh. Oh, it's Carrot Boy Milk. Oh, it's Carrot Boy Milk. I don't want to drink anything that says Trump on the carton. Not even in the slightest. Oh, that's terrifying. Anyways, is <laughs> is is a bunny slime with, with 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 Trump milk basically. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it in the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, let's go ahead and get to the video itself after you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. And like prematurely because, I mean, you're here. You already know you're going to like the video, else you would have clicked off already and told me you hate me in the comment section. And who am I kidding? You're already halfway through writing that. Anyway, Lauren Bimbo Burr. Representative Lauren Bober said humanity is in its last days and Christians should rise up invoking Christian nationalistic imagery that's linked to violence. Oh boy. A recent speech by Lauren Bober during which she invoked the end times saying it's I swear to God the end times are going to be happening right now because of you Necrophage. No, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not. You know, in fact, no. No. Bye. We're done. We're not doing that shit. Not at all. No. In fact, I, I'm turning that off. Full stream's done. Whole stream's done. Sorry. We're done. We're done. Fine. I guess I'll come back. What do I look like, you're fucking maid? <sighs> Fine. Fine. I'll go ahead and do it. For 50,001 channel points? Fine. I'll do that. Why not? It's not the worst thing I've done anyway. For 50,001 channel points, a necrof I Necrophage has made me say the worst words on the fucking planet. Oh, well. There you go. There. Hope you're happy. I'm going to go back to reading this article. Okay? Okay. <sighs> Anyways during which she invoked the end times and said it's time for Christian to rise up, demonstrated how Christian nationalist ideals, including some associated with violence, have made it all the way to the halls of Congress. 
it's time for us to position ourselves and rise to take our place in Christ. Uh, oh, um, mm, mm. maybe you shouldn't be saying that. That's that sounds a little gay. Like if I were to take my place in Christ, I'm I'm pretty sure the position would be well less than ideal. I probably need to lose some weight for my position in Christ to be more comfortable. Do you have consent from Christ? Absolutely not. He never returns my calls. But take up our place in Christ and influence this nation as we are called to do. The Colorado Republican told the crowd at a Christian conference held by Truth and Liberty Coalition in Woodland Park, Colorado, on September 9th. We need to go back to the center of our country. Bober heavily quoted scripture in her speech. She framed the information of the United States as divinely inspired and described the founding fathers as men of faith who are motivated by God. Contentious uh, contentions that have been challenged by historians. I mean, if I'm being honest, one of my biggest issues with this is that it invokes that whole like manifest destiny ship. Which is not only cringe, but also harmful. That means that God's idea was to genocide the natives. But I'm sure that's all, you know, part and parcel for somebody like Lauren Bober. That's what she would prefer. Also, can I just say that if you're quoting a lot of scripture in your speech, it feels like you just needed to make the speech longer, and you didn't want to actually... I did not miss a second one, Anubian. Don't lie to me. That's a hydrate. That's a hydrate. I missed nothing. And I did hydrate. But, I don't know, if you're quoting scripture a bunch in your uh, speech, it feels like you're, A, using thought-terminating stuff that, you know, your audience is going to listen to and nod their head to, but it also feels like you were too lazy to write those parts for your speech instead. So you just quoted, you know, uh, everybody's favorite book. Drossus, thank you for redeeming your points, friend. Uh, you fucking DJ. She then said that we know we are in the last days. How, how would you know that, Lauren? How? But we later said, referencing the belief held by some evangelical Christians that Jesus will return after a period of tribulation or great suffering and save believers. It's not a time to complain about it. It's not a time to get upset about it. It's a time to know that you were called to be a part of these last days. You get to have a role in ushering the second coming of Jesus. Why? Why? I have a question. If a person runs up onto the studio, uh, on, onto a studio podium, and starts yelling about how God has a perfect plan for you, yes, you, specifically you, do you feel more special, or do you feel like you're being pandered to? Just curious. Edging for 2,000 years, poor bastard. Yep. Look, I'm not concerned with Jesus' second coming. He's been edging for 2,000 years. We know for a fact that the, the orgasm's gonna be massive. It's gonna cause the second flood. Because apparently there was a first one. What I'm concerned about is the third coming. Because that's supposed to happen after, what, seven years? Like, God comes down, and then tribulation happens, and then boom. It's not that way. I know. There's a thousand year rule and then coming again and all the other fun stuff. I'm just curious about how the <laughs> third impact. Yes, third impact. Jesus' third impact. Is that the third impact? I, I had no idea that even Gellion had Christian imagery in it. I not even didn't even think about it. Not at all. The first coming is why the ocean is salty. Imagine the calluses. Nah, no calluses. No calluses. There's no skin left. Genshin Impact? No. No. Anubian, go, go go watch Evangelion. Please go watch Evangelion. Raindog42 TV, thank you for the subscription. And Discordant Vol, thank you for the 100 bits. Red Joker, thank you for the 101 bits, but I won't be saying whatever the hell you just said. Genshin is the fourth impact. It destroys your wallet. Oh, yo, yo. I'm, I'm of the opinion that all of those games made by that company, Genshin Impact, Honkai Impact, uh, are all just them going like, you know, anime nerds like Evangelion, they like the word impact. They just put it there. Why not? Why not? 
Said you're gonna be traumatized if you watch uh, Evangelion. Yes, you will. Like the rest of us, join us. Anyways. Anyways, Bober's comments expressing an intrinsic tie between the United States and Christianity aren't new. In June, she said she was tired of the separation of church and state junk and that the church is supposed to direct the government. No, the fuck it's not! By invoking the end times, Bober is tapping into a side of Christian nationalism that has been associated with violence. Although a spokesperson told the holy fucking shit, Jimmy, thank you so much for the five gifted subs. You did not have to do that. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, fucking hell. So you can't redeem? Yes. There's a cooldown on those now because none of you can be trusted. So do you want to stay the hell away from Evangelion? Nope, not a good idea. Always, always be near Evangelion. And the rebuild movies. They're perfect. No flaws whatsoever. Lara Desi, thank you very much for the 100-bit cheer. I thought you loved us. Drunk Deer Gaming, I have never made such a claim. I would never be so naive as to make that claim. But let's go ahead and continue. We found in our book that... We found in our book that among Americans that embrace Christian nationalism, we see increasingly the embrace of premillennialist interpretation of the end times, where there will be a tribulation, but Christ will take away the faithful. Said Whitehead, a sociologist and co-author of Taking America Back for God, Christian Nationalism in the United States. Whitehead said Bobur was taking a specific and relatively new interpretation of the end times and melding it with the idea that Christians are supposed to have an influential role in public life. He said her view wasn't necessarily about saving the nation, but about Christians countering the forces of evil while they can, uh, can and remaining faithful up until the end. Of course. Citing the end times really does feel like a call to action and a rallying cry in some cases. A lot of end times imagery is associated with violence and rapture and descending into chaos societally. Yeah, imagine the amount of terrible actions you can act, you can justify merely by saying the end times is happening. Oh no! The, the world is burning and the end times are here! That means... Loot the buildings and burn the cars, I guess. Harm the people who Jesus deems worthy of harm. Why do I smell food? I don't... That's not important. Raz must be cooking something. Experts on religion and politics told the Denver Post that Bober's remarks could be interpreted as a call for violence, particularly in relation to midterm elections. Now, the apocalypse is because we, if we don't get our people in, it's an apocalypse, said Anthea Butler, uh, chair of the University of Pennsylvania's Department of Religious Studies. Mr. Krabs, thank you for gifting out a community sub. I bet you are looking forward to tomorrow's episode of Sunset City. Whether or not we have Nick on it, because... Um, well, that that was that's uh, he's posted about it on Twitter. I guess I can go ahead and say it. Yeah, Nick's been in the hospital. But we'll we'll figure out tomorrow's episode of Sunset City. I should probably also say uh, if you are here either on stream or in uh, on YouTube and you have not already subscribed to Sunset City, yeah, please do so. We we put a lot of effort into those episodes and I'm sure Channel Pup is there sometimes too. Anyways, Though Boober's comments aren't new among proponents of Christian nationalism, such rhetoric has rarely, if ever, been deployed by a member of Congress. Christian... <coughs> Ooh, coughing. Christian nationalism has also inspired acts of violence in the past. A report published in February by a group of faith leaders, historians, and religious scholars, including Whitehead, argued that the concept was on display at the Capitol on January 6th and helped justify the insurrection. Christian nationalist ideals were also espoused by the subs, uh, suspects of the 2018 Pittsburgh Synagogue shooting and the 2019 New Zealand mosque shooting. Any time that our political rhetoric moves in an area where we are raising the stakes, where it is ultimate good versus ultimate evil, that's when political violence becomes much more likely. Bobear did not respond to Insider's request for comment, which of course she wouldn't. She's only concerned with saying that type of stuff to her base, because her base is the people that are, are her base of the people that are going to listen to that rhetoric, are going to respond to that rhetoric, and are going to give her the feedback loop she needs. Arion, thank you for the 200 bits. 
It's a combination of an effective strategy and a lazy one. It's effective because you know that your base, a base of Republicans, especially just being in America, are going to largely be Christian. And that base, especially if they have been in, oh, I don't know, Southern Baptist churches, are already used to the type of fire and brimstone apocalyptic preaching that prevails those type of establishments to begin with. If you as an individual are already primed for that kind of language to be effective on you because pastors have been using that kind of language with you for decades, then guess what? When Lauren Bober uses it, you're already primed to hear it and much like a sleeper agent, respond to it in kind. You've been told the end times are coming for so long and Lauren Bober is here to reinforce that on you. Jimmy has dropped in a hundred bits. Uh, please clear the hype train with me. Everybody, give in to peer pressure, I guess. T toss money into the well of peer pressure. <laughs> so you want them damn emotes? These are sudden flashbacks going to uh, Southern Baptist Church. You and me both. You and me both. Sarah Chikorita, thank you for the 100 bits. Like I said, when somebody is primed for this type of language, it's easy for a politician to grab it, and it's effective. It's also lazy because, you know, instead of appealing to your base by listening to their actual material needs, uh, listening to the things that they need to improve in their lives, their children's lives, things that can make the country better by generation, don't do any of that work. That's all a lot of, you know, pressure and hard work, and it's terrible to do all of that. Better to be lazy and just appeal to the thing you know they've been raised with because that makes you relatable, and it makes it seem like whatever threats you've been told will exist since they were in the little church and Sunday school growing up, you're just going to reinforce all those threats that they told were going to exist in the real world. Ivana says, I'm fitting in. Oh, no, 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 no. Please tell me you used lube before trying to fit in. Anyways, I don't think I need to go on an entire tangent of how disgusting I find it whenever Christianity specifically, or really any religion, is utilized as a political tool. My view is that while it's impossible for somebody to separate their religion from their morality, to an extent, I don't have to deal with that. If you want to be a better person because you think your religion dictates you do that, by all means, go ahead. Be that better person. But if you start trying to write public policy on the basis of your religion because you believe our country is or should be a country dictated by the ethics and ethos of your religion, then I start to hold issue. Because... As a pluralistic nation, we have a lot of people who either are a-religious or are part of a religion that is not shared by you. Better to write your laws based on not having a religion there so as not to influence things against somebody else's religion or people who aren't religious in the beginning. And the hype train is completed. Oh my god. <laughs> Smack it with the five dollars, guys! How do you have hours to watch my content and not five dollars? I hate, I hate that meme so much. It's so dumb. Jesus. Said so Alenda tried to nationalize all industry in Chile. Jeez. But. I like to hold that same standard, not just with lawmaking, but also most governmental positions. If I effectively pay your bills because I am paying taxes and that means that that's your paycheck, I would prefer you not make any laws that I or somebody else has to deal with or try to give any influence to my potential future kids in a school, for instance, that is based off of a religion I don't follow. Was that Onision? I remember him shaming people who canceled their $2 pledges. No, not Onision. It was uh, Bad Bunny who did that. Bad Bunny was the one who went on and, and complained about people uh, not giving $5. Despite the fact that when you're a streamer, you accept that you're doing this content 
for free. And if somebody wants to donate to you, then that is their business and their prerogative. But nobody should be compelled to do that. We make our content for the sake of making the content. If money comes from it, then money comes from it. If money doesn't come from it, then it doesn't. That's just reality. Trying to push it farther than that, not super effective. And it's not worth it. It's not worth the stress for your viewers. Onision was like, I have to question your honesty if you say you canceled a $2 pledge for financial reasons. So, like, if somebody's got a $2 pledge in for, like, 60 different content creators, they've got $120 out, and they start canceling those $2 pledges for financial reasons, that's $120 a month that they are, they are getting back. Also, if somebody has an account that is attached to their Patreon where that money is going out from and they have to close that account, guess what? That's also a definitionally financial reason. He would do live streams and read cancel reasons from Patreon and shame them. What the f... What kind of an arrogant prick... Oh God, we were just talking about Lauren Bober. No wonder. Arrogant pricks are just on the table. Yeah, on, on the topic of disgusting human beings who shouldn't be influencing the people they do, Onion Boy. Said, uh, what did I walk in on? Um, mistakes. That said, we are at probably the end of the information that can come from this specific post. Christian nationalism is dumb and bad. Not everybody in your nation is... One, breaking it down, nationalism is dumb because trying to argue to me that nationalism and patriotism are the same thing or they're somehow synonyms is not going to work. We have them as different words for a reason. Patriotism is pride in your country. Nationalism is exceptionalism for your country at the expense of other people. And trying to label this nation anything but secular or pluralistic, again, not going to be super helpful. Do we have a majority of people here who are Christian? Yes. Should that dictate our laws? No. Because I don't think that religion or geography or time of time in history should dictate the morality of any given action. And if we are going to accept that laws are based off of shared moral principles, then we should probably accept that they shouldn't be written based on geography, time in history or religions that we don't all share. But, that all said, Lauren Bumber's dumb. I don't know if I need to say much more. As always, everyone, instant end the video tagline here.